Hello everyone, I'm Erin Wilson, the Uniting Chair in Community Services Innovation at the Centre for Social Impact at Swinburne. On behalf of the Centre for Social Impact, I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we work and live around Australia. Right now, I'm on the land of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, and I pay my respects to elders past and present right across Australia and honour them for the care and custodianship of the land that they provide. So feel free to share with us um, the places that you're on, the land that you're on in the chat feed if you want to. Just so you know, we plan to be releasing a recording of this webinar and we'll make um, first make it available to people who have registered and a little bit later on, we'll be making it publicly available via CSI's social media channels and website. If you'd like to see a live transcription of this webinar, you'll find the live transcription option at the bottom of your screen. Just click on that live transcription button for options. You can also hide this transcription by clicking on the same arrow. The recording of the webinar will also include closed captions. Once the webinar starts, um, you'll continue to stay muted, but feel free to use the chat box for any questions or comments that you have throughout. Um, I'll be reading those as we go and I'll answer them in the Q&A session, which will last uh, for about the last 10 to 15 minutes of our session today. If you have any technical problems, please send a message to our webinar moderator, Rhonda, who can help you. So let's get cracking. Thank you for attending today's speed launch of the Community Services Outcomes Tree. The work we're presenting today has been made possible by the generous support of Uniting Victaz and Swinburne University. To kick us off, I want to introduce to you Sylvia Alberti, the Executive General Manager Operations at Uniting. As you know, the workload of opening up from lockdown in Victoria has been immense. So Sylvia can't be with us in person today, but she's taken the time to record a very short welcome video. So I'll hand over now to that. Thanks, Nicola. Hi, my name is Sylvia Alberti and I'm the Executive General Manager of Operations at Uniting Big Taz, and I come to you today from Wurundjeri Country. Community services organisations have a long and abiding commitment to providing a range of programs and services and supports to individuals, families and communities where and when they need them. We're often asked, however, how do you know what impact your work is having on the lives of the people that you work with? Well, today, I'm very pleased to introduce you to a tool that helps us to answer that question. The Centre for Social Impact at Swinburne Institute of Technology has worked to develop a community services outcomes tree with the support of Uniting Victaz. It's a really important framework that helps us to understand and assess the outcomes and the benefits of the work that we're doing with consumers. It seeks to empower community services organisations, not-for-profits and social enterprises with the tools needed to be able to measure their impact and the outcome of the work that they're doing. It's an evidence-based, user-friendly and relevant tool that can be used across community services. The Community Services Outcome Tree helps us to generate evidence that tells us about what's working and what's not. And from there, we can really understand what policies and practices need to be changed and which ones we should embed and strengthen and continue with. Importantly, it helps us to generate outcomes information that we can use to advocate for the changes that we need to see in society. I encourage you to use this framework to adapt it, to share your insights on how we can collectively improve our methods for measuring outcomes. Together and using this tool, we can raise the bar even higher on the supports that we offer consumers. Thanks, Sylvia. And I love the birds in the background there, a little bit of um, live nature for us today. So given it's a speed launch, as I said, we will launch straight into it. I want to take you on a walkthrough of the website. 
Um, unfortunately, because my computer has been having um, a whole lot of difficulties, as I'm sure everyone's uh, had this experience, I've recorded this walk walkthrough a little bit earlier to try and prevent any of that uh, slowdown and problems that we might have through connection and computer issues. So the walkthrough goes for about 12 minutes. During that time, I encourage you to put your questions into the chat um, feed. I'll be looking at that as we go along. And then we'll have a lively Q&A at the end of that. And I'll attempt to get through all the questions that you might have. So feel free to um, log into the chat feed and do that. So let's have the walkthrough on video now. Thanks. Welcome to the Community Services Outcomes Tree website, which you can find at Community Services Outcomes Tree, or one word. Dot com. This is an information site. It offers a comprehensive outcomes map for the community services sector, along with a lean method for collecting outcomes data. And I'll walk you through it in a minute. Our goal here is to resource community services with some of the tools needed to underpin the measurement of outcomes experienced by consumers who use those services. The focus here is at the individual level. That is, what has happened for users of community services. While this outcomes approach has some utility for community level outcomes, things like trying to measure increases in community cohesion, for instance, its focus is on outcomes for individuals, not at the community level. Research undertaken by the CSI node in WA has shown us that community services are often poorly resourced to undertake outcomes measurement. Outcomes measurement is also an incredibly complex space. There's many outcomes frameworks in different parts of the sector and from government and within the literature. There's also many, many, many measurement instruments, each measuring different parts of the picture in different ways. Each of them has their strengths and their limitations. So in short, it's a complex world. And what we've tried to do is simplify that and provide an immediate base to get started. So uh, let's look around the site. So we're landed on the home page at the moment. And as you can see, we have a, um, a tree that captures 12 discrete domains represented here as leaves. These domains have been identified from a wide literature analysis of outcomes frameworks of measurement instruments and of looking at the focus of community services in Australia at the moment. Each domain is broken down into more detailed outcome areas. As you can see, if we hover over the leaves, we can see these outcome areas um, as we go across. So I'm going to hover over the leaf of employment and we can click into any of these outcome areas and it will take us to a further description of concepts frequently associated with this outcome. So if I click into career planning and knowledge, that will take us through to a page that explains what the literature thinks about this particular outcome area, the sorts of ideas associated with it. And you can see over here that we've got a couple of questions. We won't get to those just yet. We'll come back in a minute. So to return to the outcomes page, one of the lovely things about um, this listing of outcomes is that it shows us the set of concepts or ideas or attainments that comprise each of the domains. And it helps us focus on different areas of change. tried to keep them separate. So one way to click through the site, as I've just shown you, is by using the front page, the home page, and navigating, navigating across the leaves and clicking into the outcome areas that you're interested in. Another way is to use the outcomes tree tab at the top of the screen. Now this takes you to what is essentially a vertical listing of all of the outcomes. 
And so we can scroll through them and we can see all of the domains and their associated outcomes listed there and we can move up and down the screen to find the ones we want. We can use any of these buttons to click through into that question set area that I just showed you. But one of the really useful things on this page is this downloadable and printable version of the outcomes tree, which I'll open up now. So what's great about this is it's the cheat sheet. It's all of the outcomes and domains on a page. Now, we use this um, in our work with community services as a, as a way to identify those outcome areas that are relevant to the particular service we're working with. So we have some techniques for doing that, which you can find by going back to the how to use page. Um, and there's some advice about ways to work with um, practitioners and with consumers of community services to think about what are those outcomes that we most value in this service and that we most want to measure because we can't measure everything. But I love this cheat sheet, so I encourage you to download it, print it, use it. Terrific. So um, back to the home page, always another a great place to go. Um, let's go and have a look at these question sets. So I'm going to move into the domain of choice and empowerment, and I'm going to select the, um, the outcome of sets and pursues own goals. So you can see that the way each of the outcome areas is set up is consistent. So we have a description on the left, which captures, as I said, what the uh, literature thinks or means uh, about each of these outcomes. So the sort of key ideas that we find in the measurement instruments or in the um, outcomes frameworks. And then we use that description over on the right in a question. So essentially we use this question format um, throughout the entire site, except for a couple of places. And we've broken it into two questions. This is, can really be thought of as the minimum data required if you're going to set about seeking outcomes measurement approach in your service. So the first question focuses on the level of change experienced in relation to that outcome area. So it asks the consumer to think about, in this case, setting and pursuing of goals. It explains to the consumer what we mean by that, by drawing on that literature, and then asks the consumer to think about how has this changed for you since coming to the surface and thinking from a, uh, a scale of, you know, got a lot worse virtually through to got a lot better with a couple of options around not being relevant to me and a, a sort of in the middle and not change section. We do have some other advice about this not change section that you can find in our survey template. The second question is a contribution question, which is a little bit different from an attribution question. It's essentially recognising that there are many things that contribute to an outcome for somebody. And so this is asking the consumer to think about, um, do you think the service made a positive contribution to, to this particular outcome area? And it asks the consumer to then choose no, yes a little bit, or yes a lot. So as I said, this format um, is pursued right across the um, outcomes framework. Let's move across to the survey template area. So these um, question sets are available that we've just looked at. If you'd like to, you can either copy and paste them from the page that you see them on and just paste them back into whatever document you're using for your own data collection, or you can download them in Word form here by clicking on this um, question set menu. Any of these will take you through to a full question set for that domain. The thing though here that's probably most useful is the survey template. And what we have um, done here is to provide you with a list of questions to think about for um, including in your data collection approach. That's really up to you to adapt and to customise these and to think about which ones are most useful. Um, we certainly are not suggesting that you use the format that we have here and it's, it's an explanatory format. Um, but we do suggest and highly recommend that you do include um, a couple of questions here. So we have developed a question that relates to barriers to outcomes and a question related to service improvement. And we think that asking consumers about the barriers 
that get in the way of them achieving outcomes is a very useful piece of intelligence that a service needs if you're going to advocate for change in a consumer's life uh, and also to redesign your services to best meet their needs and overcome those barriers. Over on the resources page, we um, have a range of things. So we know that outcomes are pretty slippery concepts and they're used in different ways by our funders and across different frameworks. And so what we've tried to do here is do a bit of uh, translation for you. So we've taken some of the um, common outcomes frameworks here and we have um, translated across into these to show uh, how, how, uh, how, how things relate. There's also some, uh, some resources here that you can follow through uh, and use uh, to help you in your outcomes journey. We'd be very happy to hear from you and, and others. So I'm gonna go back to the home page just while we talk a little bit about um, what we would love to hear from you. We would really um, love to hear what you think about this website. Essentially what we've done here is to make a start. We want you to help us grow this resource and make it something that's useful for you. It's freely available. You can download it into uh, your own systems, into your own CMS platforms or any kind of data collection platform um, that you choose. We have a feedback tab where we hope that you will leave us some feedback and give us your thoughts about what could be improved. We're particularly interested in whether or not you think we've captured the outcomes relevant to the people that you work with um, and your areas of interest and interested in just how you've experienced it. There's essentially no rules with this site. Uh, really, it's an information site. You can take this information and use it in whatever way works for you. Um, we want you to adapt the questions and the instruments um, there's nothing perfect or final about this. What we've done though is tried to cut out the hard work of looking across all of the outcomes, frameworks and instruments and trying to work out what they need and you know what's there to choose from. So this is a bit of a map really. It's compatible with other tools and um, we'll, we'll be able to talk to you further down the track uh, about how it can be used in conjunction with things like CSI's indicator engine so we hope we've taken some of the hard work out of this for you and our main hope is that you can build on it and not repeat the work that we've done so far but you can take the next step um, and we'd love to take the next step with you so love to hear from you about what you think about things before i finish up i just want to acknowledge both uniting Vic Taz as the sponsor of this work and the csi team and particularly my co-researchers dr robert campaign dr chris brown and james kelly so Thank you for that. Awesome. Now I get to thank myself. So um, kind of a funny, uh, funny format there. I've been noticing your uh, questions in the chat, which is fantastic. So I'm going to go to some of those now and attempt to respond to them. And then if we have time, um, people can come off mic. But I'll see if I can work my way through a few of those to get started. Um, Katia, I think, uh, raised an interesting question first up around um, access to childcare being an issue for people then getting the outcome for employment and how do we deal with that? So there's a couple of ways of thinking about these kind of problems. One is that when we were working with community services, the very first thing that we saw in community service land at the moment is that many services uh, are funded to, one of their main outcomes is actually service access. So one of the things that that they do a lot of is to help uh, consumers find their way into the right services such as childcare. So there is um, a domain that goes to um, entitlements and service access. So there's an outcome around being able to support someone to get that service access. So that's there and a useful capture because I think community services do a lot of that and many outcome domains, um, outcome frameworks don't look at that. So this is probably something that we've added, which is a bit different. The other way to think about that particular issue though is um, 
is the issue of the barriers that get in the way of outcomes. And this is why we recommend using the barriers question that's on the survey template, because no community service can get outcomes for everyone in all instances. There are many systemic and other barriers that affect the, the outcomes that we can achieve when we work with people. So it's really important to note what those are. And it's important both from the sense of being accountable in terms of the community service can only do so much and we need to be honest with people about that but it's also important as far as collecting that data for advocacy purposes when we're talking to government so if we have evidence to say we've achieved this amount of outcome but here are the barriers that are preventing further outcomes and this is what we're seeing across our cohort um, then this is really good conversation and good data to inform that conversation about what's possible so we really recommend that you um, think about that barriers area um, one of the other things that uh, people have talked to us about is the issue of contribution, not attribution. Um, and to some extent, it goes to this point, um, Natalie, I think, uh, asked this question. The attribution question has always been problematic. Um, for those of you who have been around the outcome circus for a long time, you'll know that attribution, you know, is, is probably the, the thorn in the side because it's really difficult to unpick all the things that go into creating an outcome outcome, including all of the services that work together to go into creating that outcome. And so the contribution question, specifically in the way we've framed it here, which is our suggestion, asks consumers to think about what's been the contribution of this service to this outcome. That's not to deny that there have been other contributions and they may have been more major from other services um, or from other things. So um, that's, that's why we've gone down that path. Um, just in speaking about that, I just want to pick up on those two questions that we've got there against each outcome. The reason why we've provided you with a couple of uh, question options is just to try and um, close the loop, if you like, so that we, we've moved from identifying what the outcome framework is, the domains and outcomes that sit inside of that, all the way through to what are the minimum questions we might ask if we were to collect data about these. Now, of course, um, as I said, there's a thousand ways of collecting this data. We're not suggesting that the question sets that we offer are the best or the only ways, but they are, our design here has been for minimum data, lean data. And so you'll notice that the question set, when it asks about the level of change, the first question, it's focused on a, a reflective cast back over the service. Often um, in the way instruments are designed, they have a pre and a post service measure. What we know from community services is that this is incredibly difficult to achieve to get two data points from the same consumer that we can then match up and analyze. And even if we can get it, community services don't always have the resources to marry up those two data points. So our minimum data approach has been to ask this question only once and we ask people to think back over that service. And now, of course, this question can be adapted. You can put in a time frame and think about the time since, you know, over the last six months or the time since you started. But that's why we've gone with that kind of um, approach to thinking about how do we measure the outcomes, um, the level of change that's occurred since using that service. Uh, a couple of other questions to pick up on. Um, Aaron says, how do we move it into uh, data collection? It's a great question, Aaron. One of the um, reasons we haven't moved this into a fully you know, developed automated data collection platform is that many community services have their own um, community, uh, sorry, client management systems uh, that they're using to collect data inside of. So what we've opted for is something that can be taken and integrated into different CMS platforms. And we'll be doing that work with Uniting uh, across a couple of different CMS platforms, hopefully, to see how that goes. Um, and that way people can use their own systems. Any kind of data collection in community services ideally is linked to a client list of some kind and even better, is linked to other data that speaks to the amount and type of service use that each client has. So our goal has been to provide you with the information that then you can take and adjust and customize and download and integrate. 
Uh, and the final uh, question that I got to, and then I might have to um, get Rhonda perhaps to read me some more, was the one about the New South Wales Human Services Outcomes Framework. Um, we certainly looked at that outcomes framework and integrated that as part of our literature review. We haven't yet written a recipe for it, if you like, that is what outcomes from our tree marry up with that framework so therefore what's the cheat sheet recipe that you could use to go and collect the data but we can do that and we can add that to the website and we certainly want to continue to add these kind of resources to the website as you suggest them to us so um, we're very keen to get your feedback uh, on the feedback button on the website there's both a survey and a little uh, comments box that you can put in all of these sort of suggestions um, and you know even resources if you want to share those we can also load them there. So I'll stop for a second and um, Rhonda I'm not sure if you've noticed if there are other questions. Uh, there are a few more. Um, we've only got three minutes left but perhaps one of them might be um, whilst the target user is clearly community services providers, do you think it could be applicable for outcomes monitoring for social enterprises and their beneficiaries? Yep, definitely. Thanks, Libby. I forgot to mention that question. I saw that. Um, yeah, absolutely. Look, it's, it's applicable to any activity or organisation that is looking to see a level of change for individuals with whom they work. So, uh, it, the areas that perhaps are not covered yet well are things like, you know, um, artistic and creative endeavour, for instance. But if we think broadly about the sorts of social benefits um, that attend community services, they're often very transferable into social enterprises, particularly those who look at employment, who look at issues of you know, um, health and wellbeing and social inclusion, those are all captured in this outcomes tree. How are we going? One more? We'll do one okay. more. <laughs> There's also lots of comments from people thanking the team um, and saying that this will be a very useful resource for them, which is great. Um, another one is, do you see applicability to health, ec health economics? That is, can we use the 12 domains to guide data collection for an economic evaluation, which involves the use of community services? Um, you could certainly use the domains as I have worked in health economics previously, I would suspect that health economists would not be too happy with the question set. Um, health economists tend to use uh, other sorts of indices to speak to elements of those domains. So it's quite likely that health economists would wheel in a different instrument that would measure the same sort of outcomes that we've listed in those areas. Um, the health domain in some ways you'll see is uh, quite broad, knowing that there are lots of ways of measuring health outcomes. It's probably the most resourced area in community services measurement. Um, so we've, we've taken a different approach to that, which is a very lean approach, knowing that these other resources sit behind that. Thanks. I realise we're just on time. So I just want to wrap up and thank everyone for coming along. We really look forward to your comments. I'd like to also uh, just put out two more areas of thanks. Thanks to APO uh, for promoting the event. And there is a little pamphlet on APO about the outcomes um, about the Outcomes Tree website. If you're interested in that, you can head over to APO. And also I'd like to thank um, the Swinburne uh, design Bureau, which is a Bureau of Design students who designed our website for us. So thanks again. I'm really looking forward to seeing feedback and comments and suggestions. Really looking forward to what people can do with it. I encourage you to make it your own. Um, not repeat the wheel, not redesign the wheel, but go and design another wheel to fit on the car and that'll help us all. So thanks very much everyone and uh, see you later.